محمد الصادق الوعد الأمين وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وأصحابه الكرام ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده وحبيبه ورسوله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح للأمة وجاهد في سبيل الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وسلم تسليما كثيرا أيها المؤمنون الحاضرون أوصيكم ونفسي الخاطئة بتقوى الله وطاعته إن الله مع الذين اتقوا والذين هم محسنون قال ربنا سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولقد كرمنا بني آدم وحملناهم في البر والبحر ورزقناهم من الطيبات وفضلناهم على كثير ممن خلقنا تفضيلا وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في أحد من حديثه وهذا الحديث حديث قدسي قال الله سبحانه وتعالى إني حرمت, إني حرمت الظلم على نفسي وجعلته محرما بينكم فلا تظالموا Dear brothers and sisters, I praise Allah as he deserves to be praised and I ask him to send his peace and his blessings upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family members, his companions and all of those who followed his way of life. And I bear witness that there is no God except Allah and I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah and his servant. We are living in some very difficult days right now. As a matter of fact, what makes these days difficult is the coronavirus pandemic that unfortunately, even during summertime, is not going away. And the other thing which is making these days difficult is the fact that there is a lot of racism out there. There was a murdering of a person in Minneapolis of a black person and this murdering took place because a police officer, um, I mean this murdering took place from a police officer. Uh, so this person was murdered by a police officer and uh, not for a just cause. The police was not trying to defend himself but he just simply murdered this person most likely because of hate and uh, racism and because of these important feelings that people have in them and at the same time these are very condemned by humanity and condemned by religions as well the life of a person is being taken away and the lives of many hundreds and hundreds of people recently. Thousands and thousands of people throughout the history and perhaps millions of people throughout the history here in the United States and in many countries around the world, uh, these murderings took place because of hate and because of racism and so on. I wanna remind every one of you that racism or hate injustice, looking at yourself higher than the others is a satanic attribute. It's a devil, it's an attribute that comes from devil. In the Quran we know that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the angels to prostrate to Adam as a sign of uh, honor and respect, not in worship, فَسَجَدَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ The Quran says that the angels, they all prostrated. إِلَّا Iblis, Except for devil, except for Satan. In a different verse it says, كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِّ فَفَسَقَ عَنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّهِ And in a different place it says, فَاسْتَكْبَرْ And they're both valid. Both of these actions that he took after disobeying the word of God, they're valid. I mean, they're part of the history. First, 
he, uh, he sinned, he's transgressed against the command of Allah. And number two, he showed pride. How did he show pride? We have another verse in the Quran that elaborates on this one. And it talks about the words that he mentioned when Adam was created. He said, uh, I am better than him. You created me out of fire. As a matter of fact, out of the best part of the fire. And you created, while you created Adam السلام, from clay. So in other words, he was trying to demonstrate to God and to the angels and to us nowadays that he is better than him because of who or, or because of how he is made. Now, this is a wrong judgment. This is a wrong approach. In other words, it is prohibited in our religion to think that we are better than the others based on our race, based on our color, based on the language that we, that we speak, based on the status we have in society, based on the job that we do, based on the education that we have, based on anything pretty much that has to do with these worldly things, to believe that we are higher than the others, more virtuous than the others, better than the others, it is something completely prohibited in our religion. It was out there. They may be Muslims. They are non-Muslims. In this country right here, when we see racism and when we see hatred, it usually comes from those that are non-Muslims. But again, I'm not excluding uh, racism and pride. Arrogance is a part of all members of faith communities out there. Uh, in other words, it does not discriminate between the levels in society and the religions. Pretty much everybody, unless they work with themselves, unle unless they better themselves, the people usually will fall victims of uh, race, racism and victims of hate, prejudice and uh, arrogance and you name it. That it is perhaps in most of the countries, I have visited so many countries around the world and I can tell you that this is a part of most of these countries that I visited. Um, not necessarily hatred but uh, racism or feeling superior above the others, even within the people of the same country. Um, and I, I don't want to go into details what country and this and that, but this is a um, universal phenomenon of feeling superior and feeling better. And by the way, Americans who live in America, who consider themselves patriots and very uh, who consider themselves to be superior over the other nations around the world. You know, those people were the best, were the best. Uh, remember that there is a lot of other nations who say exactly the same thing as you say. I am the best. I'm. This is what most of the countries that I've visited, that I've seen, this is what they say. But again, it requires education. It requires contemplation. And it requires travel as well to see the beauty that does exist in different societies, that does exist in different countries, and customs, traditions, culture, all of these are important components that make every nation a unique nation. But because they are unique, that doesn't mean that they are superior over the others. And again, when you... Uh, consider yourself to be superior based on the money you possess, based on the power you have, based on your unique culture or tradition, or as I said, customs, or because of your skin color, then you're failing. You're failing and that, you know, feeling superior in that way is nothing but ignorance. It's, it's straight up. The bottom line is ignorance and nothing else. If, you, if these components, they make you feel that you are superior 
above the others, then I'm sorry to say you are an ignorant person. You didn't have a chance to really understand. You didn't have a chance to maybe look around. Because if you think about power, you have it now, later on you're not going to have it. And it's for sure that you're not going to have it. Language, it's very unique, but so are hundreds of languages out there that are very unique. Customs, well, you maybe have uh, some unique customs or, or culture, but remember that just as you are unique, there are other nations around the world who are unique as well. You probably didn't have a chance to go and visit. And I'm not talking about being a tourist for a few days here and there. I'm talking about living with people and understanding the culture. So that's why I'm trying to say that all of these things that, or components that people uh, rely on making them superior or giving them the feeling that they are superior above the others are all false feelings or feelings that are based on ignorance, not thinking a little bit. And here comes the, the Quranic verse where it talks about something very unique, which is a valid reason for people to feel superior. However, it does not give them a chance to feel superior. I repeat it again. It is something to know what can make you feel superior over the others or what can distinguish you from the other creatures. However, it does not give you the right to feel like that. Somebody may go like, what is he trying to say? Again, it is righteousness. The bottom line is righteousness. And righteousness, it can make you superior over the other creatures, superior over the other people that God has created. However, you don't know whether you are more righteous than the other person or not. Therefore, you have no chance to display or to demonstrate that superiority over the other people. Why? Because this is a secret. Righteousness, it's a secret. It is between you and your Lord. You know it, but you don't know what's in my heart. I don't know what's in your heart. You can pretend, I mean, you can dress up nice like this with an imama, with a jubba, with, you know, with other kinds of dresses, and you may appear as a righteous person, but in the end, it is you, it is me, and it is the Creator who knows what's in our hearts. Therefore, even though I'm dressed this way, even though I am praying so much and somebody else may not be dressed this way or somebody else may not show that he is praying as much as I am praying, since righteousness is something secret, I cannot judge the person. I can't because it's in the heart. Righteousness is not made to be from the outside or to be seen from the outside and to judge that Somebody is righteous because of the way how he dresses or the way how he, how long the beard is or where the pants they go or whatever the case may be. No, we don't judge righteousness based on these elements. As a matter of fact, we don't judge righteousness at all. We're not judges of righteousness. It is only God who judges how much righteousness you have. But you also know because you are the one who produces it. You're the one who gets engaged with it. Of course, through the help of God, but you are the one who commits to those good deeds that will lead you to righteousness. So I think it's very clear, the Quranic concept on righteousness and what could make somebody be superior over the others, yet the person cannot do it, cannot display that. Why? Because the person doesn't know how righteous the other people are. I mean, another person who may seem to you like less righteous, he can be more righteous than you are. So if that's the case, then what are you left with? <laughs> You're left with nothing but humbleness. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man tawada alillah rafa. The person who expresses humbleness for God, that person 
is lifted by God, meaning that that person's uh, character is being displayed as a positive character by God. Even you don't have to, if you have a good character, God is going to be the one to, uh, uh, you know, to, to put the seed of love, the seed of respect towards you from other people. Why? Because you have humbled yourself. So again, the one who humbles himself or herself for God, a God will raise that person, will uplift that person. Again, um, we live in times and societies where these principles are not understood right. And uh, I think we as Muslims living in this country, we have a responsibility of delivering these messages. People that live with us, people that work with us, people that are friends with us, they need to be aware of these concepts. Why? Because we can play our role in the society that we're in, our positive role to change things. And somebody may say, why do we even need to do that? The reason is because Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a hadith when he talks about the munkar munkar is something that is uh, sinful something not good something that can be considered to be sinful when a person sees this munkar displayed out there that person must change this number one by his hand or her hand if you can change it you do it again that doesn't mean that you'll get yourself in trouble by going to jail and by suffering lifetime consequences and doing things that are not uh, valid according to religion and to the rules of the, of the country that we live in. But if there is a possibility of changing it with your hand, then you change it with your hand. If you cannot do it with your hand, then you need to change it with your mouth by speaking against that munkar, by speaking against that evil or that sin. Not remaining quiet. And the third, you have to, if you cannot change it with your, with your tongue or your mouth, then you don't feel comfortable inside of you, in your heart. You don't feel comfortable when you see that. You reject that with your heart. You say, you know what? I wish I had the ability to change it with my hands. I wish I had the ability to change it with my mouth, you know, by saying something against it. Um, but if that's not the case, at least you don't feel comfortable when you see that in your heart. Now, um, after this death that took place a few days ago in Minneapolis, in Minnesota, we have, uh, there are, a lot of people out there who stood up and they protested in many states around the, around the country. And uh, it is a valid reason for people to stand up. It is a valid reason and it is a must as a matter of fact. When people see injustice, when people see murdering of the, of the people that way, it is a must for people to do something about it. However, now, let's just reflect a little bit on the hadith when the hadith says they must change it with their hands by burning a store down, by burning a police station down, by uh, stealing, you know, uh, targets and other convenience stores that are out there. You're not serving the purpose. You're not serving the purpose. As a matter of fact, you are doing the opposite of what you're supposed to do. Because this is something, you know, standing for the rights, it is something virtuous. Whether a person is a Muslim or a non-Muslim, when that person stands for the rights, when that person protests, like Martin Luther King, for example, Malcolm X, and many other well-known figures throughout the American history who protested, they spoke loud, even if they had to go to jail because of their speeches and because of speaking loud and standing for their rights. 
you know that is totally fine and that is a part of of a person being a virtuous person but the moment you turn this virtuousness into stealing or into burning or into murdering other people then it's not virtuous anymore then you're not standing for a sacred cause standing for the rights of the people is standing for a sacred cause again this goes beyond the religion this this is not okay whether it is a Muslim or not Muslim no speaking against violence speaking against police um, police violence nowadays and again I'm not saying all the police but there is police violence for sure so standing against police vi uh, violence standing against um, political oppression standing against when the people's rights are being taken away standing against when people are discriminated based on their religions right Muslims for example Islamophobia and all these things standing for these causes you're standing for a sacred cause and again turning it to something else then you're not standing anymore anymore for a sacred cause but you're standing for your own uh, either benefit when you when when you steal you know these these shops or you are turning it into hate by burning these things by burning stores by burning police uh, uh, departments you know buildings and again like I said this is you're just fulfilling your your own you're, you're being hateful you're practicing hate in that case you're going by your feelings instead of standing for the sacred cause and here's the thing I mean when people they burn these places you know when people they go out there they burn these places or they kill innocent police officers because an innocent person was murdered then uh, what you're doing is you're making other people again pay for all of those buildings because when a police station is being burned they have to uh, they have to reconstruct it again and the government the city has to reconstruct that police department again and we know this for sure that they will where are the where are they going to get the money it's going to be your tax and my tax that we chip in in order for the roads in order for these you know police departments for some county hospitals to be built and to be maintained salaries to be paid and you name it so when we do something like that it's going to hunt us back it's going to come back to us and we have to be the ones to again pay for that so we're destroying it with our own hands and we are rebuilding that again with our own hands I don't think that's a smart action to do but again it's very hard for me to speak uh, and to say that this will never happen and I'm not justifying those who may burn a police station but sometimes I also understand the fact that uh, you cannot control the people and somehow that uh, that uh, reaction is going to come out it's not gonna just be contained with uh, you know with a demonstration with a peaceful demonstration is going to take some other steps further and I can see that I don't necessarily agree with that I don't think that that's the right way of doing it but this is the nature this is the nature of the humans when when there is so so much discrimination when there is so much violence when there is a murdering of people like that you know is going to uh, the, the response is going to be sometimes not the way how we think or not the way how it should be so this has to also be taken into consideration and um, but again we're not I personally and I don't agree with anybody who may say there that yeah let them see the consequences it's not them actually it is us who are uh, you know being harmed because of these consequences when these demonstrations are causing uh, lives of the other innocent people or stealing like I said or burning down buildings government buildings and things like that and remember Muslims we are recommended and we also would recommend the other people as well who are not necessarily Muslims to not be violent and not to uh, cause a destruction in society 
When I say destruction, meaning that through the actions of certain individuals or protesters, you're going to have no government or you're going to, you know, the government may collapse somewhere here and there. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but I'm saying as a result of those, uh, it shouldn't go to such levels. Why? Because uh, uh, bad government is better than no government at all. Right? So bad government, as long as there is a system there that judges the criminals and you know, uh, puts people who are criminals in jail and uh, gives guidance to certain things, uh, having a bad government is better than having no government at all. Because when there is no government and the justice system is not going to work at all, uh, people are going to take things in their own hands. Uh, chaos is going to prevail in society overall and the strong is going to beat the weak the weak is going to suffer tremendously um, poor are going to get way poorer so I don't have to go into details but it's, it's, it's a bad scenario if that, if that happens as a result of protest you know people protesting and all I hope that's, that's not the case and I pray for that not to be the case, but I am a little bit concerned. I am concerned for the fact that we are uh, living some difficult times right now. As I said from the beginning of the speech, I said coronavirus, I mean, we know this pandemic, it's all over, and we know that this has already impacted the economy, and it's going to impact the economy in the future as well. It's going to impact a lot, and uh, uh, having this on top, you know, where you have uh, not just protests, but they're becoming violent, you know, you know, violence on top of violence, then uh, these are, I would, you know, I would think of these two as, imp you know, some essential components or elements that can bring turmoil in a society. Okay? So we have economy problems, we have disease, we have this sickness that a lot of people are sick from, and they're all trying to protect each other, trying to protect themselves from this. Maybe not all, but you know, <laughs> at least they should. Um, and, and then on top of this, uh, things are not settled when it comes to these issues, race issues, uh, injustice, and you name it then uh, these are, like I said, some elements that can bring a lot of chaos in a society. That can also even bring governments down. Like I said, I hope that's not the case and I don't wish for that. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps everybody safe and uh, you know, uh, maintains that order in our societies or help us maintain that order in the societies. But these elements, as I said, they can be very, very dangerous because they are one on top of the other like that. So that's why I suggest, you know, um, for us to speak, at least us Muslims, based on these Islamic concepts that I just mentioned to you earlier, we speak about them. You know, we, uh, we tell the others about righteousness, as I said, and about valuing each other and against crime, um, uh, and fire is fire always, you know. Most of the time, that's not the case. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا If you're going to preserve patience and preserve righteousness, that is going to be better for you instead of you retaliating. And we have talked about these principles many times, you know, throughout the month of Ramadan as well. But that's what Islam calls us for. And that's what we need to be role models and we need to be teachers, you know, to the others. Uh, so hopefully Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect these societies that we live in. Regardless whether they are Muslim societies or non-Muslim societies, we want and we strive for peace on earth. Let us be among those who are going to uh, do what they're supposed to do, during, especially during these difficult times, by helping each other, protecting each other, from uh, racism, from uh, the superior feeling, from arrogance and uh, injustice. 
and make us leaders in righteousness. Yes, make us leaders in righteousness, inshallah ta'ala. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad, as-sadiq al-wa'ad al-ameen, wa ala